I'm in Sundavery, and today we'll be looking through another one of my old sketchbooks. I filled this sketchbook from May through June of 2016. In the sketchbook directly previous to this one, I had developed this Corvid character that I used to make diary comics to externalize my emotions and so this very first thing we have is one of those Corvid diary comics. This particular comic is about something that used to worry me a lot. Um, I worried a lot about whether my identity was a lie or if I had somehow lied to myself at some point and then based my identity on that. And I will say this isn't something I really worry about anymore. At some point I accepted that I am myself and if I ever stopped being comfortable with myself I would just then do what felt comfortable instead. So I'm very happy to not have this fear anymore. Here we have another diary comic. By this point the Corvid's design was still a little bit in flux but at this point we've sort of started getting a more standardized appearance. So you've got the two feathers in the back of the head. The mouth doesn't always appear, it will sometimes appear for comedic effect, and the pupil usually does not appear either, again, only for certain expressions or comedic effect. And then down here we have thumbnails for a comic about a radio station in a post-apocalyptic world. In my previous sketchbook, I had done some character designs for this. I had planned to submit it to an anthology, and it did not get accepted, so I never ended up completing it. But these are thumbnails for that. And then here are more thumbnails. I believe the plotline of this was supposed to be that there were two people who used to DJ at a radio station and for some unexplained reason, they had lost contact with each other in this post-apocalyptic world, and in this comic they were both coming back to the radio station and thus finding each other. Here is another diary comic. I don't know, a lot of these diary comics are pretty self-explanatory. Here is a character design for a story I never really finished. I think right at the end of the last sketchbook tour, I had a small snippet that was like about two guys, a trans guy and a cis guy, going home for the holidays and there was like fake dating involved. This is a character design for that. And then this is the second character design for that. I don't know, these are pretty cute character designs. I um, think maybe it would be worth revisiting them and sort of turning it into a possible shorter comic rather than a full-scale graphic novel like I think I'd been envisioning. Looks like this page fell out, but here is a comic about being frustrated about strangers presuming my gender. And we've also got some surf sort of swatches down there where I was sort of trying to decide what the background would be since I'd been noticing that some of the darker colors, while they had sort of a good dramatic effect, it was hard to see the writing on this, on them. And later I would end up solving this by using a white gel pen or white opaque ink, but I did not have that tool in my arsenal yet. Here is another diary comic about depression and sort of trying to force yourself to do things that you normally enjoy, even when you don't enjoy doing them. Here's sort of a... I'm guessing this was a page where I wasn't really feeling it, but was trying to get myself to fill a page anyway. So we've got those two characters from earlier, Benji and DJ. We've got some Peridots. I'm not sure what that is, but it's been scratched out. That looks like a lapis that was scratched out blobs that have been filled in with parallel lines. That's a really good warm-up for your hand. More sketchy Steven Universe drawings. We've got a pearl, a sapphire, a ruby, and a peridot. 
a diary comic about a old relationship of mine. That's not very healthy. Here is a diary comic about transphobia, basically. This was in response to some sort of inter-community discourse going on at the LGBT center I was a part of, but I honestly can't remember what specifically it was about, just that it was spurred by a cis person or cis people trying to take sides in an issue that was really more of something that only trans people should be sort of discussing. And again, I do not remember what it was, just that it wasn't really an issue that cis people should be taking um, stands about. Here again, um, the comic directed at my younger self in reference to that relationship that that previous diary comic referenced. <laughs> Here's a uh... Well, that's that's fine. It's, it's it's naked. So we've got like a jokey drawing of a person with titties out, globular ass cheeks wiggling around. And then these are a rough draft for a comic that I definitely drew. I assume it'll come later. Yeah, it's right here on the next page. So this is a rough draft about sort of how easy it is to pick up things from the people around you and sort of how sometimes you'll find yourself echoing something you picked up from someone that you know isn't in your life for a reason. Here is a page of Echolalia. I think I, in my previous sketchbook, the one previous to this, there was a comic about how just the name Boz Lerman gets stuck in my head. Some of these still get stuck in my head. Some of these have been phased out. Here is a diary comic about eating habits. The caption's kind of half erased here, but I think it was also sort of how I tended to start off the day with very good intentions and wanting to eat very healthy, and it would sort of degrade over the course of the day. And by the time the day ended, I would be making very unhealthy eating choices. Here's a comic about anxiety. I, I still really like this one. I think it captures it pretty well. I think, I think the wiggly mouth is good, and I like how it's the Corvette is fluttering off the page in that panel. Here is another diary comic about being frustrated about people assuming a gender based on the clothes you're wearing. I'm not sure why I did the lettering in that purple metallic pen. It looks like I had a Sharpie down here, so maybe the Sharpie ran out of ink and I had to cover it up with something. Here is another page of sort of scribbly, brain dump kind of drawings. We've got a random head, some cars, an electricity pole, a generic figure bemoaning that there's a bunch of stairs. And then here in the corner, there's a little, you can tell it's a little self-portrait. Got my long skirts that I did and still do like to wear. The fluffy hair I had at the time and a little t-shirt with my Corvette on it. And then here is another diary comic about feeling kind of like your patience and energy have been burned through. A little tiny rough draft. And then there's the comic that the rough draft goes to. Um, it looks like a little... looks like I was trying to sort Steven Universe characters into Hogwarts houses. That's kind of embarrassing, but for the record, I sorted Amethyst into Gryffindor, Steven and Garnet into Hufflepuff, Pearl and Peridot into Ravenclaw, and Lapis into Slytherin, and yeah, you know what, I'll stand by that. And then here's... I never finished it, um, but here is a, I guess, Harry Potter Steven Universe crossover drawing of Slytherin Lapis and Hufflepuff Steven being friends. Here is a comic about how, basically, if you work a minimum wage service job, 
you can't really take time off when you're sick because you're only given a little bit of sick time so you need to save it for something that like really 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 you need it so if you spend your sick time on things where you know you're like have a debilitating stomach flu and literally can't come into work then later in the year you're gonna be coming into work with a cold and you'll have that cold for weeks because you just can't stay home and rest and you'll spread it to a bunch of other people because you're in the service industry this comic is from 2016 and i think it says a lot about where we are now in 2020. Just something to think about. Here is a comic about saying no. I really like this one, although it is still difficult for me to say no all the time. Here's some Homestuck doodles at the top. It looks like we've got Jan and Roxy, and we've got Dirk and Jake. Back when Homestuck Act 6 Part 2 or whenever the Alpha Kids got introduced, it was like big debate over whether Jake or Dirk was taller, and I was a firm proponent that Dirk was actually tiny. Even though it's cringe things to have opinions about, I will stand by that. I think Dirk is tiny. And then we've got a little script. I don't think this was a script that I wrote. I think one of my friends sort of wrote the meat of this script and then I sort of edited and adapted it to something that would fit comics. Yeah, and then here it is. So this was, um, again, chosen, like this was, the meat of this was written by my friend about their feelings and then I adapted it to be a fitting comic script. And I believe they also picked what um, animals would be here. Like, obviously, that's my crow and my partner is squirrel, but I'm not sure who the budgie, badger, and pangolin are. They were just ones that my friend requested be there to represent some of their friends. Another diary comic about lingering trauma and a little rough draft. Another rough draft. Several different rough drafts all on this page. And then we've got a little... another sort of trying to just fill up the page. Got a little crunched up figure. This, I believe, is the living room of the house I used to live in. So there's like a bookcase full of CDs and LPs and it's got some figurines. That looks like maybe it was my scanner. And this looks like it was the corner of my bedroom. Uh, I can see like the top of the blinds, um, posters. Maybe this was in my bedroom too. I'm not sure. I thought I remembered that shelf being in the living room, but maybe that was also my bedroom if it's on the same page. There's a diary comic, and we saw the rough draft for that earlier. Here is a diary comic about wanting external validation about labels. I was kind of vague about this, but I think it was specifically in reference to mental illness. Um, I'd sort of started therapy, and my therapist wasn't big on, like, assigning labels and diagnoses and was more about tackling specific problems and symptoms but i was very hungry for a specific label to be put on my problems um and i think that again that's not something i really worry about as much these days here is another diary comic um, again don't have it's pretty self-explanatory don't have much to add to it diary comic about thinking a lot about punching myself in the head. I don't know why, but that's like my go-to self-harm instinct is blunt force to the head. Rough draft, rough draft, again about wanting to protect my younger self. We saw the rough draft for that a couple pages earlier. <laughs> this one <laughs> was definitely drawn by Aiden. Um, this appears to be a little man being propelled into space by the force of poops. Very Aiden drawing. I'm not certain, but this doodle up here, as well as this diary comic, probably was in response to the Pulse nightclub shooting. Um, I think this is around the right time frame for that, and I think that that's supposed to be a rainbow flag. Yeah, that was a uh, 
scary and hard to process event for a lot of people. Here's a rough draft about headaches. It's a really pretty pink. I wish I still had a marker like that. And then there's the rough draft, or there's the diary comic that goes to that rough draft right there. I lived near a college at this point in time and when all the college students would move out for the summer, it was the premium time to go dumpster diving. And if you went around campus and jumped into all the dumpsters, you could find a lot of really good stuff. Here's a comic about not being able to tell if you need rest or if you're being lazy. And a rough draft about it being hot out. I don't know if that became an actual diary comic. A diary comic about having trouble choosing an outfit to leave the house in because everything feels gross because of dysphoria. And a little doodle of my partner's squirrel resting their head in my Corvid's lap. A diary comic. This was probably based on an actual conversation that my partner and I had. Another diary comic about feeling kind of overstimulated and overwhelmed. And then another rough draft down here. It looks like maybe Aiden was helping me trying to place the panels here, because that doesn't look like my handwriting completely. Here's another page of scribbles. Here is trying to sort of map out the relationships between different characters in the musical Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812. Here is a little oak sapling. I grew it from a acorn. The like I had had a bunch of acorns on my windowsill and one started sprouting so I put it in dirt and I was so excited and sadly it died in a heat wave and I still miss it. I have tried many times since then to get acorns to sprout but it hasn't worked and it had a little ceramic bird that I kept in its pot. There was like an awkward teenage jay that would come when I put peanuts out onto the fence for birds and it like half had its adult feathers and half had like its fluffy baby down and it was very cute. And then here is I guess a mountain with some like currents of water or maybe air swirling around it. Diary comic. Pretty self-explanatory once again. Another page full of scribbles, just trying to get the juices flowing. We've got some corvids, got a figure slumping against an object, and this looks like a Dave Strider drinking boba. Another diary comic about being detail-oriented. It's not noted here, but this was, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was specifically in the context of employment because um, the turtle was what I used to represent my boss at the time because she had a turtle for her little icon on the like work computer. And this looks like Homestuck again. Um, looks like height head cannons for different Homestuck characters, but I'm not entirely sure who everyone is. And judging by the ears, this is probably Jade. This might be Jane? Or maybe this is- oh, I bet it's Rose, Jade, Dave, and John. I bet that's it. I bet it's the beta kids. Um, I'll stand by most of these. I think that Dave is tiny. I think all Striders are tiny. Here's the return of the internal dialogue crows. They're sort of based on the idea of like a shoulder angel and a shoulder demon, except in this case, neither one is always right. You've got the red crow, which is um, passion and activity, but also anxiety and anger. And you've got the blue one, which is, you know, calmness, but also depression, melancholy, or lethargy. So, in some cases the red one's correct, in some cases the blue one is correct. Um, something interesting is that these ones have the pink eyes representing like the inside of the brain, whereas later on I think the blue one gets red eyes and the red one gets blue eyes. I'm not sure when I changed that, and I don't think it was a conscious decision, because actually this makes more sense. Here's another diary comic. 
I mean, so many of them have been diary comics I was trying to do. Looks like I was experimenting a little bit more. I think it turned out alright. Another diary comic. I feel like I remember this one being pretty well received. Looks pretty good. I still like this one quite a bit. Oh, and here we have... Two rough drafts that were obviously drawn by Aiden. One about moving houses, and another one about moving houses. I guess about how it's exciting, but also a lot of work to move houses. I don't know if I actually drew these, and I'm not sure why Aiden was drawing rough drafts for me. Here's another rough draft that Aiden drew. I guess our fridge broke at one time, I forgot about that. Carl discovered our solid milk. Ew, that's gross. And then... There's another rough draft. This one I definitely did turn into a comic. I wonder if that's in this sketchbook or if it ended up being in a different sketchbook. Oh, nope, there it is. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but I can definitely tell that I did the, uh... Most of these are drawn with alcohol marker, but the background of this one is drawn with a water-based marker, and it's a lot streakier. And then here is... Pigeon, Scrub Jay, and Crow. I think these might have been character designs for another anthology submission. I believe there were like three characters. Possibly they were witches. It had kind of a fairy tale vibe, the story, but they were based on those. Um, oh, and I guess that's the end. And then at the end here is a note from my brother. While we were moving, he'd come down to help us move houses, and I let him see this sketchbook. I sort of asked him to look through it while I wasn't around, um, and he wrote a note in it that I found later, thanking me for letting me look through it. And that is the end of this sketchbook. That was the sketchbook I filled from May through June of 2016. I hope you enjoyed that. And be sure to stay tuned because I will be continuing to document my sketchbook collection. Stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later in another video. Bye! Should I do like a little thing to sync the audio? You just did. There. Did it anyway.